Hello guys! Today, Dafuk released another compilation on his YouTube channel that contains both parts of episode 69. And if you know Dafuk just as good as I do, you'll be sure he added something new here. So today, I am going to dig all the hidden details for you guys that you could have missed. Get your tea and snacks ready. That's going to be really fun. Let's go. First of all, I'd like to applaud to Dafuk, because this guy seems to trick us all once more by doing that compilation out of nowhere. If you know guys, I used to make several predictions that episode 69 is going to consist of at least three parts in order to finish all the plot arcs for different characters that we saw throughout both parts. But as I see, he's about to do something different with the next episode's structure, and I have some ideas about it, but I'll share them with you later. So be sure to watch this video to the end not to miss anything interesting. Now let's start talking about the changes we could notice in this compilation video. The first changes we see are happening towards the end of the first part of episode 69. This time, the scene where the survived members of the squad are walking through the hallway towards the room with the yellow glow doesn't end just here. It keeps going, so we can see how instead of just going straight forward, the Terracotta Bro turns right to the elevator gates while activating the controlling panel. Then he turns around, and in that moment, I notice something interesting in the background. The yellow lights flicker one time, and it looks like the sequence of lights, or some sort of alarm flashlight which is moving in circles. As I said before, this Skibidi base is equipped and protected really well, plus the certain areas of it are being observed with hidden CCTVs. I wouldn't be that surprised if that glow would mean another tool of this base protection waiting for our guys ahead. The Terracotta brother gets his tablet once again and shows his comrades another transmission. On the screen, we can see G-Man. And I think this is the guy that came to us from the second part of episode 67. By the way, check out the intermittent series of yellow lights that can be seen in the scene. I think what Terracotta is showing his bros from the tablet takes action right in the room ahead. Now let's talk about G-Man a bit. If you remember, he flew the battlefield in panic when upgraded Titan TV Man appeared. So based on that, in my previous analyses, I guessed that it might have been the real G-Man because if he would be just a puppet too, he wouldn't panic so much while trying to escape as quick as he did. But as this secretly added scene goes further, it gets more and more complicated. So keep watching this video in order to get the whole picture, because this G-Man theory has more layers. Here on the tablet screen, we can see all the attributes we saw on him in episode 67. It's the turbine and his iconic lasers. Also, draw your attention to the yellow hose that goes near his right ear. They were also supposed to be guns next to his eyes sticking out. But here, I don't see any. Well, at least he has his glasses on. It looks to me that G-Man is currently in the process of being upgraded, and here's why. Do you see these platforms the Skibidi in front of him are standing on? They really remind me of the platforms in Cameraman's scientific lab from episode 23, when we had been shown Titan Cameraman being upgraded for the first time. The picture and the vibe of those two scenes look almost the same to me. By the way, there's one funny thing I noticed about those Skibidi chilling on the platforms. Why don't they seem to have any robotic hands, though? Maybe it just cannot be viewed that clear, or they actually don't have them. In that case, guys, what are you even doing here in the lab? I really doubt you may be of any real assistance. Also, I noticed how these two guys, one in the hard hat and another one with the welding device and saws, are those exact Skibidi who could have been noticed in the second part of episode 68. Besides those two, we can see the third Skibidi with yellow grappling claws, who kind of reminds me of that one guy who grabbed the box in the second part of episode 68. Near the ordinary Skibidi on the platforms, I see some helicopter choppers thing. Maybe it's some kind of air cargo with upgrades for G-Man. Also guys, I cannot help but pay your attention to this highly suspicious guy on the top left side of the tablet screen here. It's almost impossible to distinguish his face, so all I can do is actually just guess. He looks like an ordinary Skibidi from such a distance, but his position in the frame makes me think that he wasn't put there by Dafuk just for fun. What if it's actually an original G-Man? We already saw the original Skibidi scientist in the end of episode 67, and we know that real Skibidi are actually quite small in size, which still doesn't change their malicious nature, of course. But if this is real G-Man, then who's controlling the G-Man puppet we see in the foreground? Because his mouth and eyebrows are moving. And another question is, if this G-Man has been controlled by someone other than G-Man himself, why would he flee the battle in such a panic? 
I have another thought on that. Maybe it was G-Clone as well, but the best one so far and with the most upgrades and resources that were put into him. So maybe he escaped the battle knowing that it was a lost case anyways, and it would be wiser to save this body's abilities for another fight, but in the different surroundings. But again, those are just speculations at this point. And what do you guys think of that? Please share your theories on where the real G-Man is in the comments below, because I'll be really interested to read them. In any case, G-Man is about to get heavily upgraded real soon, and I expect to see him back in battle in the next episode. By the way, as we know at this point that it's the G-Man from the second part of episode 67 being placed in this room, I can guess that the source of the yellow glow is his core. That was yellow as well. Maybe it's being recharged here? Now check out this little guy going to the right side of the tablet screen. I bet it's this Skibidi that opens the doors for the room with yellow lights, because once the Terracotta Bro puts the tablet down, we can see these doors opening just a split second later. Maybe our guys from the squad were spotted by CCTV cameras, I don't know. Apparently those three Skibidi that were present in the engineering room an episode before came here to warn G-Man of the possible threat getting closer. So maybe he'll get relocated somewhere else in order to finish all the upgrades before the battle. Also, I start having really big questions about what are our guys even doing here at this point and who they are trying to beat. What's going to be the next move for them? Maybe they're moving not to some certain enemy, but to the Skibidi base's core to destroy it? Who knows? And on this note, this secret scene ends. Now let's move to another change I noticed in this complication video. First of all, another iconic handshake scene appeared between Titan Cameraman and Titan TV Man after the last one recharged our Blue Chad's core. It seems like Defouk has really warm feelings towards that one Predator handshake meme, and I cannot really blame him for that. Second of all, the phrase was added right before the handshake scene between Titan Cameraman and Titan TV Man. We can clearly hear Titan TV Man saying holy sh** in the process. <laughs> Apparently, he was referring to the poor state of Titan Cameraman's core, or about him in general. Because our Blue Chad really endured lots of crap on his way to this episode. And I think such rough support from Titan TV Man really adds more flavor to his character, and makes the whole interaction between them even more wholesome. Meanwhile, as Titan Speakerman asks to recharge his core as well, Titan TV Man says another additional phrase which sounds like, Not now. Not now. And I want to add that this phase hints about some sort of plan those three probably have in mind. So now it's not just a funny scene where older bros are messing with Titan Speakerman, but an important detail. Maybe Titan TV Man will recharge him right at the Skibidi base, and maybe there's a certain reason for him to do so. Now, let's move on to the last change I noticed in this video compilation presented to us by Dafuk. Do you remember that cameraman who approached POV in the end of the second part of episode 69 to give him the new equipment? I noticed how now he's the only one having the square protective lens, because the rest of the cameramen that could be seen around him in POV are wearing the ordinary round protective lenses. And we can see how another square lens is being given to POV. It's placed right under the protective earphones. Also, in the new version of this scene, it turned out that POV was presented not a classic shotgun, but some other modernized weapon which we'll also see afterwards. Also, Dafuk made the ending scene a little bit longer, so instead of darkening the screen in the moment when cameraman draws the weapon in front of POV, we can see the camera turning around, and a few more shots. And the first thing I see here is Big TV Man from behind. So I finally have a long-awaited opportunity to look closer at the claw-like things on his back, holding his four TV screens. Also, I can say that the texture of his claws got altered a bit, because I don't remember seeing those purple dots when Big TV Man appeared in episode 40, and I find it funny how Dafuk put this texture right next to the fallen Skibidi scientist puppet claws, as if he was implying, look, isn't that suspicious to you guys? Well, I guess the purple color means friendly weapon, so I have no worries about it so far. Aside from Big TV Man, all the Alliance's members noticed in this frame are equipped with all sorts of protective stuff. Because, as I already said in my analysis of the second part of episode 69, it seems like the final battle is near, so everyone got ready to put all their best. And I have a theory on why all the cameramen wear the protective lens. Maybe it's due to the fact that they may be probably fighting alongside with Titan Speakerman, who will be using his speaker's powerful ability to produce sound waves. Near the bunker's entrance, we can see cameraman engineer in the white shirt who's doing something using his tool. Apparently he cracked the gate's code and made the door open. 
And just as it happens, everyone starts blasting like crazy. In the opening, we see multiple Skibidi facing the uninvited guests, and all of them are wearing glasses. They kind of reminded me of the Skibidi we saw in episode 43. It seems like both sides are really prepared for this fight. Also, I got really confused by POV's weapon. It seems like a really interesting gun and not a shotgun as I thought earlier. I'd be really curious to see how it works in the next episode. And that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons under this video. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!